Finally, I've got the platinum chip back. My vengeance is complete. And we have a new presidential suite here in the tops. Decorated by the corpse of Benny. Cleaning people are going to have fun cleaning that up. This has lots of alcohol and water. You know, I don't have that many glasses. May as well collect some. Got a wall safe. I've really got to look at the lock pick up to 50. ASAP. Oh, hey, that's a skill book. Unarmed plus three. Ooh, Veronica, I've got to say, you're, you're not looking, you're really not looking to, what's the word? Look, I'm just going to be frank with you, you look like an idiot. So she is full. That looks like I might just have to walk around over encumbered. <clears throat> Drop some of that stuff. Not in dire need of potato crisps. I guess this is the conference room? A meeting room to me. You really, you just look like a goober walking around with that combat knife, having a gas mask on, and then wearing those rags. Jet. Hmm. Benny didn't even mention I was wearing a suit. He's probably too busy being surprised that I'm still alive. I think I'll consider this place looted. It's pretty nice. But I don't know that I'll be staying here in the tops. I really think I'd prefer a room at Gamora. But last I checked, they didn't have any rooms available. You know, one more for good measure. I think that's sufficient. I wonder what Swank will have to say about all of this. He should be happy that he's in charge now. Looks like Benny's guards are none the wiser. Hey, there's the high roller. 
You're making me carry. Oh, I'm over encumbered anyway. I might as well grab everything off of her. Hey, Swank, isn't this an appropriate song to be playing after Benny just got whacked? Hey there, pal. Welcome to the tops. And what can I do for you today? I killed Benny. I guess you don't care. Yeah. See you, kid. Okay, fair enough. I've got to go... Have a quick... Interaction with my Brahmin. The eyes of the mighty Kaisa are upon you. He admires your accomplishments and bestows upon you the exceptional gift of his mark. Any crimes you may have perpetrated against the Legion are hereby forgiven. Kaisar will not extend this mercy a second time. My lord requires your presence at his camp at Fortification Hill. His mark will guarantee your safe conduct through our lands. You again? Crucify any more small towns since Nipton? How'd you find me here? I am the greatest of Kaisar's frumentari. It was not a challenge to find you. Nor is this my first visit to the Strip. Why does the mighty Kaisar want to see me? Go to him, and you will understand. Seek Kaisar by way of Cottonwood Cove, south of Nelson. The Corsor Lucullus will be waiting. Yeah, I don't think so. Betsy, Betsy, Betsy. I have so much booze. All right, there we go. 57 of 60. Most of my carry weight is being taken up by caps, unfortunately. What the hell are you... Damn Securitrons. Don't you just love that platinum chip? Buzzes with power and possibilities, doesn't it? If I were you, I'd almost want to deliver the chip to Mr. House, just to learn all its tricks. That is, unless you want to bring the NCR or Caesar's Legion to power, I wouldn't want to tell you what to do. So I guess I can't kill you. You just upload your programming to another Securitron. Hope to see you soon. All right, now that I'm no longer encumbered, we were going to go check out the aces. Hello. Though I suppose Mr. House might want me to rush back with that platinum chip. He doesn't know I have it yet. What he doesn't know won't hurt him. Let's see, where's the Aces at? Aces Theater. Was it upstairs? I think it might have been upstairs. You're the fink that killed Benny. This place is the bee's knees. Uh, I did kill Benny, yes. Hey, there's the high roller. Hey, there's the high roller. I guess you didn't just hear him this proclaim that I killed knees. Benny. That you're not very loyal. Hello. Maybe they're loyal to Swank hey, now. The high roller. This place is the bee's knees. Hello. Mr. Franco. Hello. I don't believe we've met before. My name's Mr. Franco. 
We'll just, uh, leave it at that. Are you some kind of gangster? No, I am not. And watch your words. They do not take kindly to gangsters around here. If you don't mind my asking, then, what do you do around here? So polite and composed. Oh, this skill would be most helpful. I provide the patrons of this establishment with the resources necessary to take a risk at obtaining greater wealth. So you're a loan shark. Well, that is one way of putting it. I like to think of myself as a provider of opportunities. Many of those who I lend money to make tenfold what I lent them. They pay back their debt and go on their merry way with their winnings. Of course, there are those who lose it. You look like someone who knows how to handle themselves out there. How would you like to work for me? I never take a job without knowing about it first. Details, friend, details. Ah, of course. Uh, let me explain. There are some people around here that borrowed money from me, and when they lost it, they split. It's simple. I need you to do whatever it takes to get my money back from them. I don't care how you do it. Be it through persuasion or uh, other means. People need to know that if they mess with me, they gotta pay up or get fed to the Night Stalkers. I will tell you who they are and how much they owe me, and you go get the money. I would, of course, be willing to compensate you for your time and effort. I'm already pretty practiced in the area of collections. Good. All these local people are drifters or unwanted, so uh, harming them won't affect your reputation in the local area. We'll start you off easy. The first one is a man named Thomas Hayward. He owes me a hundred caps. The crook up and left after losing it all on a single bet at the roulette tables. He's a moron because he literally ran across the street and is camped out next to the LVB station just outside. I would go get the money myself, but I need to be here to provide to other potential customers. Let me know when you've retrieved his measly debt. Hello. All right. This we found ourselves a new friend and employer, it would seem. And next, we gotta find the Aces Theater. Oh, well, we could go ahead and... He said it's just outside. Let's go collect. Do that first. Across the street at the LVB station. That'll be it. Veronica, where are you going? Stop running away. Hello. Give me something worth 400 caps, please. Close enough. Now that's just a soldier. Now that guy looks like a deadbeat. Do you have any money to spare? I'll take caps, NCR dollars, or legion coin. You owe one Mr. Franco a sum of 100 caps and it's time to pay. He still wants his money? I thought he'd forgotten about me. I don't know. I might have it if you do me a favor. Might have it, huh? You also might have it on you if I put my fist through your skull. Or a shotgun. You aren't so tough. You think? Search Thomas's body and find Mr. Franco's money. I think he had it, boys. I mean, girl and cow. Did 
Just doing an honest day's work. Don't mind me. Hey, there's the high roller. Mr. Franco, where'd you go? You Have are. you handled Thomas yet? He's been taken care of. Oh, good. I hope he wasn't too much, uh, trouble for you. Here are some extra supplies I have. Are you prepared for another job? Two Nuka-Colas, 39mm rounds, stem pack. <laughs> so he's not paying me in caps at the moment, he's paying me in supplies. That's fine with me, honestly. This stuff's pretty useful slash valuable. Yeah, I'll take the next job. All right. The next one is a guy named Matt Heathrow. He's a drunkard that hangs out in Freeside. If he's conscious, he's drunk. If he's unconscious, it's because he's drunk. The man spends every cap he gets on booze. I don't even know how he managed to work out a deal with me in a state like that. The inebriated fool owes me 360 caps after playing a game of what he calls blackjack, and I call him haplessly squandering his chips. Matt Heathrow. That's in Freeside, so that's a little walk. Let's head up to the Aces Theater. I was going to check that place out. Here it is. You dig this crazy scene or what? I can dig it. Swank fill me in about Benny. Hell of a thing, baby. Hell of a thing. Swank mentioned you might be looking for some new acts. Can I help? Sure, baby, sure. Tommy's always looking for new talent to bring to the aces. Tell you what, you see any good acts while you're out wandering, give them my card. If they work out, I'll give you a 3% cut of the door. Just swing back by as you recruit folks. I'll get you your bread. Make it 5% and you got a deal. Ooh, a shop customer. All right, all right, 5% it is. Tell me about this theater. Well, it was my idea. Well, me and the rest of the Rad Pack boys. We took it to Benny, and he thought it was a good idea. A few years later, here we are. The best show in New Vegas. What'd you think about Benny? Benny? Uh, he's an all right cat, you dig? He don't got much musical talent, but he knows how to run a business. When he's around, anyways. Yeah, I hear you. Anywhere, any idea where he goes when he would disappear all the time? Well, now, you didn't hear this from Tommy, but Benny likes to go off on a bender now and then. Usually he's only gone a couple of days, but this last time, nobody saw him for almost a month. Ask me, I think he's got a dame from Gamora holed up in a suite because nobody ever saw him leave it. Not quite. It was a Securitron, actually. Take it easy, baby. But he won't be around... Well, ever again. Ring a ding, baby. Okay, I can't talk to the barkeep from that side of the bar. Get your drink? Yeah, parched. Best booze in Vegas, baby. What'll it be? Here, have a stim pack. And a magazine, why not? I hope Swank's smarter than Benny. Well, he probably is, considering he hasn't crossed me yet. So, uh, we're looking for talent to add to the Aces show. So if we see anybody, looks like it'd be a good act. Send him his way. Make a little money. I need to check these magazine things. Do these have magazines in them? Yeah. 
Mailsharp Review, Programmer's Digest, and Salesman Weekly. Continuing patrol. Okay, you, you do that. Hey, come on, pal. I'm trying to put on a show here. You're welcome. Have a few questions. All right, then make it snappy, kid. This isn't exactly a lucrative career enterprise here. Who are you? The name's Knight, Billy Knight. And this here's what a lifelong career in comedy will get you. Oi. Very impressive. Woof. If you're not the most sarcastic fella I ever met, your standards are so low they could use you at the annual Gamora Sassy Limbo competition. As the bar. Ha. You're hilarious. How long you been doing comedy? If you believe my mother since she first laid eyes on me, first thing she said was, boy, that's a funny looking kid. I guess I got a face only a mother could love because no one else would give me the time of day. Hey, maybe you can help me. See, I you can never both, tell pal. when it's lunchtime. So you're looking for your big break, huh? Break's better than a shot. Less chance of lead poisoning. Hey, if you know any gigs hiring, I'll work cheap. Real cheap. I'll take peanuts. I'll take the shells. Tommy Torini at the Tops is hiring entertainers. I could put in a word for you. Yeah? Hey, you're all right. Tell him I'll do it for 100 a night. No, 50. No, 20. 10. Just don't rob me. I'll do it. Hey, don't sell yourself so short. You're worth more than that. Whoa, geez, what was I thinking? You're right. I gotta go in there with a cool head. Tell them how much I'm really worth. Alright, so we already found somebody. I remember that guy yelling some shitty joke at me as I walked by earlier. So. Uh, well, we could... Hmm. I think we'll... Hang on to the platinum chip for a bit. Mr. House has been a patient man waiting for this chip for quite a while, so... I'm sure he won't mind in waiting a few more hours while I wrap up some business here in... Freeside. So I think we've got... You know, I bet there are some entertainers over at... Atomic, the Atomic Wrangler. Okay. I think we've got a couple of things right over in this area we need to do. Go look for entertainers at the Wrangler that James Garrett might be willing to part with. And Matt Heathrow somewhere in this area as well. Come to the Silver Rush for all your energy weapon needs. Right here somewhere. Ah, you're... It's this guy. Hey, what are... What is the... You have drink for me? It's this drunk. Where's Mr. Franco's money? You spend it all on booze? Mr. Franco? Uh, damn. I forgot about him. Why should I trust you with my money? Just hand over the money. Mr. Fr Mr. Franco and I will leave you alone. Fine, man. Just take it and don't come back without a drink. Here, have a drink. It's not alcoholic. I guess he doesn't like it. It's rude to refuse a drink.
I don't like people begging for alcohol, okay? I hoard it all for myself. Look, I know it's nasty work. Should have brought something to read. Not sure why I bring Veronica along for these things. At least Betsy doesn't complain. Sometimes you just have to get your hands dirty. Okay, so we're that looking for... Benny had it coming. Yeah, yes, he did. He did have it coming. So, an entertainer for... The Aces. Whoa, baby. Am I looking at a mirror? Or are you just that ugly? Looks like we've got another shitty comedian, boys. I mean, girl and cow. Watch your mouth, or I might just rip it off. Whoa, Nelly. There's insult comedy, and then there's psycho comedy. I guess you aren't the heckler Garrett hired to spice up my show. What do you want? Who are you exactly? Either you need to get your eyes checked, or that famous fleeting thing is true. And since I happen to be world famous, you must be going blind. Name's Hadrian. Bet you never saw a ghoul in a suit before, huh? Of course, you don't exactly strike me as the worldly type. Guess you must be blind too. So you perform stand-up comedy. Yeesh, is my act that bad? Or are you just that dumb? Yeah, that's right. Got me a nice juicy contract with the management. Judging from the economic state of Freeside, they can't be paying you that much. Okay, I admit it. I ain't exactly rowing in caps here. But what do you want? I'm under contract. I can't get out. Tommy Torini is hiring new acts at the top, so I think you could make better money there. Too bad I got this ironclad contract with the Garretts. They'll never let me out of it. I could talk to James and try to convince him to let you go. He's a friend of mine. Huh. Good luck. Garrett's a tough, mean son of a bitch. He's not likely to give up. Let me know if you make any headway. Yeah, go on. Scram. Never seen a ghoul in a suit. Hello. What a funny guy. I hear Benny got force-fed a little slice of heaven. Man, what I would have paid to see that loathsome little weasel eat it. It was pretty glorious. But that's not why I came to talk to you. I'd like to get Hadrian over there out of his contract, the ghoul comedian. Now why would I want to do that? His performances make me quite a lot of money. But how much do you lose on folk not coming into a place with a ghoul performer? No, what? That doesn't make any sense. Would people really be turned off by that? I brought him a ghoul prostitute. He's not the right fit for this place. You'll find better performers. I suppose you've got a point. Plenty of Brahmin on the prairie and all that. Fine, I'll cut him loose. He's all yours. Thanks. Call it a favor. Bye. I owe you. Any luck with Garrett yet? He's agreed to let you out of your contract. You can go work at the tops. Really? You mean I'm finally out of this shithole? That's great. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. While I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and stash away my bottle caps. I'm carrying way too much. It's dangerous. And encumbering. That ought to be enough. I feel like I haven't eaten anything in a while. I should be hungry. I haven't heard my stomach rumble. Alright. Getting a bit hungry. Evening. Not starving yet, though. 
We're accumulating a lot of caps. Which means I have to find a way to spend. How full are you getting, Betsy? 261 out of 600, not too bad. You're making me carry the heavy stuff, aren't you? All right, let's go. What's the word on our beloved drunk? Let's just say his drunken in his drunken stupor he fell over and didn't get back up again. Serves him right. Here are some more supplies you might find helpful. Are you prepared for another job? I am. Okay. This next guy is a gambling addict. And everyone calls him Chips because he's always in a casino gambling. He left town without paying me back, and he owes me 715 caps. Word is he's living out of the East Pump Station, just east of town. He stays out there because he's a ghoul, and he doesn't like to be in the city for long. Let me know when you get the money from him. Seven hundred fifteen caps. That's a pretty penny. East Pump Station. Have I been there? Looks like I haven't discovered the map marker, but it's near the Durable Dun Sacked Caravan. Of course, that would require us to leave Vegas. Why is everyone running away? Did you know the strip's all stirred up lately? Oh, Tommy's dancing. Guess it'd be rude to interrupt their act, huh? Still dancing. Hey. Did you know the strip's all stirred up lately? I dig this crazy slang. This place is the bees. I want my money. Evening. Uh, Do they ever get tired? Tomorrow. Hello. Evening. Wait, what did he give me as a reward for that? I saw 20 gauge rounds, I think. He gave me some 20 gauge rounds and some Rataway or something. This place well, I suppose. Hey, how's it going? Well, if it isn't my number one fan, what can I do for you, number one fan? Nothing. Yeah, go on. Uh. You don't have any food? I'm getting kind of hungry. Better looking at Gamora. Hello. See you around. Are they ever gonna stop dancing? Yes. Did you know the strips all stirred up lately? Jesus Christ, they had a three hour act. Did you know the strips all How's stirred it up lately? I Hey, hey, welcome, welcome, welcome to the finest entertainment experience in New Vegas. My name is Tommy Torini, and how can I make your night? We just met earlier today. No, no need to introduce yourself, you already did that. Let's talk about the acts I recruited. That comedian, you mean? Yeah. He was a hell of a haggler. Cost me a pretty cap. Hope he's worth it. Here's your 5%. How much? 150 caps, nice. Talk about the other one. That ugly mug with the razor tongue? <laughs> Dig it, baby. He'll be one hell of a novelty act, just like Tommy promised. Here's your 5%. Sounds great. You know it, baby. 210 caps. Take it easy, baby. Dig this crazy Hello? slam. Don't call me, baby. Evening. This place is the bee's knees. Okay, so that's a couple acts for the aces. I've collected... Got another job for Mr. Franco. But I'd hate to leave Vegas without having a chat with Halsey.
So, Benny has been handled, and you've recovered the platinum chip. Let's have it. Not so fast. We need to discuss payment. Our terms were clear. Now that you have the chip in your possession, any attempt to renegotiate payment would be tantamount to blackmail. You say that like I'm above blackmailing you. Though you did offer me 1,200 caps, that's pretty reasonable. You want the chip? Here it is. Such a small thing, isn't it? And yet so capacious, so very dear. Decades of hiring salvagers out west to search for this little relic in the ruins of a place called Sunnyvale. Back then, anyway. That's where the chip was printed on October 22nd, 2077. It was to have been hand-delivered to me here at the Lucky 38 the next day. But the bombs fell first. Suffice it to say, the delivery was never made. So, what happens next? A great deal shall be happening. A cascade of events with you taking a central role. At the moment, however, all you need to do is take the elevator all the way down to the bottom level. You'll understand soon enough. Step closer to the demonstration area, if you would. I expect you're well familiar with my Securitrons by now. The titanium alloy housing that protects its electronic core deflects small arms and shrapnel easily enough. Its X-25 Gatling laser produced to spec by glassing housing is deadly against false targets at medium range. And for close range suppression or crowd control, the Securitron is armed with a 9mm submachine gun. All of this you probably already knew. What you did not know is that these are the Securitron's secondary weapons. All this time, my Securitrons have had to get by running the Mark I operating system, which lacked software drivers for their primary weapons. Today, with the delivery of the Platinum chip, all that changes. Behold, for the first time, Securitrons running the Mark II OS. The M-235 missile launcher gives the Securitron the ability to engage ground and air targets at significantly longer ranges. And a rapid-fire G-28 grenade launcher ensures the Securitron is deadly in close-range engagements. The software upgrade also includes drivers for the Securitron's highly sophisticated onboard auto repair systems. Altogether, the Mark II software upgrade confers a 235% increase in combat effectiveness per unit. The city of New Vegas finally has soldiers worthy of protecting it. Return to the penthouse now. We have much to discuss. A pretty impressive upgrade. That's what the Platinum Chip does. Trips to the basement are rarely so educational, don't you think? I've since broadcast the upgrade to every Securitron in range of my transmitters, and I must say, it's causing quite a stir down on the strip. Why well, show your hand like that? Now your enemies know what you're up to. I'm surprised you can still underestimate me after everything you've seen. I haven't shown my hand. I've shown one card. I've given my enemies a single provocative datum upon which to fixate. They have no idea what other cards I'm holding. It's a strong hand, believe me. I dealt it to myself. You think your Securitrons can defeat Caesar's Legion and the NCR? Why would I want to go to war against the NCR? They're my best customers. If their leaders weren't scheming to steal Vegas out from under me, I'd have no troubles with the NCR at all. To secure the future of New Vegas, I must have your assistance. 
The work ahead is dangerous, but you weather danger well. I do seem to. I think it's best we keep House close and continue working with him. I'm listening. The next step will require you to infiltrate Caesar's camp at Fortification Hill. That sounds insane. Not if you've been invited. Do you realize that you've made quite a splash here in New Vegas? I can predict with a high degree of confidence that you'll receive an official summons from Caesar, if you haven't already, that is. He's already invited me, yes. I'm not surprised. The Legion has spies on the Strip. What's in it for me? I'm not offering you an incentive as crude as money, though there'll be plenty of that. What I'm offering you is a ground floor opportunity in the most important enterprise on Earth. What I'm offering is a future. For you, and for what remains of the human race. And what do you want me to do there at Fortification Hill? I want you to open a hatch in the basement of the derelict weather station atop Fortification Hill. You'll recognize it on sight. The hatch bears the logo of the Lucky 38, same as the Platinum chip. How do I open the hatch? You can't. But the chip can. The hatch will recognize the platinum chip and open sesame. What's inside? Something very important. I wouldn't want to spoil the surprise, so don't bother asking. Don't let it be a giant robot, please. I do have other questions. What did you want to discuss? I'm surprised you haven't asked what became of Benny. That's because he ceased to be relevant when you recovered the Platinum Chip. Revenge doesn't interest me. Progress does. Sorry to deny you a moment of primate triumph, but you'll have to go elsewhere to sound your barbaric yawp. What else did you want to discuss? So calculated, so cold. Though I guess you're predictable. You go by odds. Calculations. Progress is number one. But progress... in whose best interest? Your own? Humanity? Vegas? What is your priority, house? What are your plans for New Vegas? I've resurrected Vegas, spirit intact. What I need now is the ability to enforce my rightful claim. Not just against Caesar's legion, by the way. In fact, the NCR is a more present and insidious threat. How do you intend to enforce your claim? To enforce, one must have force. A position of strength. Years ago, when I detected NCR scouts roaming the Mojave, I could tell from their uniforms that these were no mere tribesmen. I knew it was only a matter of time before an army appeared to take control of the dam, and I knew my Securitrons wouldn't be enough to oppose them. And so I recruited the three families. Vegas belongs to me because I mustered enough strength to bring the NCR to the bargaining table. Wasn't the NCR's army big enough to defeat your Securitrons and the three families? Indeed it was, and still is, but not without taking significant casualties. Would Kimball and Oliver have traded the lives of hundreds of soldiers for absolute control of Hoover Dam? Oh, yes. They weren't afraid of me. They were afraid of Caesar, that attacking me would leave them vulnerable to a Legion offensive. And so they negotiated. Not out of the kindness of their hearts, as they try to make it seem, because the calculus of power left no other choice. It's a delicate balance. House needs the NCR and the Legion. What were the terms of your treaty with the NCR? NCR forces were permitted to occupy Hoover Dam and establish a military base at McCarran Airport. Well, 
It used to be one. They recognized my sovereignty over the Vegas Strip and agreed to supply electricity and water once their engineers repaired the dam. Written into the treaty were provisions that the NCR do nothing to prevent its soldiers and civilians from visiting the Strip. That's how I harness the NCR to my endeavor. Their occupation has been the engine of my growing economy. Genius, really. Would you go to war against the NCR? The salient issue is that they will go to war with me, if given the chance. There's just one reason why the NCR hasn't contrived some outrage to justify invading the Strip. Caesar's Legion. The final battle between those two armies is fast approaching. I can't afford to let either side win on their terms. What else did you want to discuss? How will they defend Hoover Dam? General Oliver's strategy, or tunnel vision, as I like to call it, has been to mass troops at Hoover Dam. He wants to outfight the Legion in a straightforward slugging match, and then, when they rout, pursue and destroy them in detail. A crushing, decisive victory of this sort would overshadow the tactical ingenuity of Chief Hanlon's defense four years ago, you see. What's your battle plan for the dam? A good deal should be obvious to you by now. I won't spoil the rest by talking out of turn. <laughs> what else did you want to discuss? You already told me about Vegas getting its electricity from the dam. What was Vegas like before the war? It was a place of splendor. As magnificent as today's strip may seem, it's but a shadow of the neon paradise that was Las Vegas. I grew up not far from here, and though I traveled the old world extensively, I never found another place like it. You said you saved Las Vegas. How? By 2065, I deemed it a mathematical certainty that an atomic war would devastate the Earth within 15 years. Every projection I ran confirmed it. I knew I couldn't save the world, nor did I care to, but I could save Vegas and in the process, perhaps save mankind. I set to work immediately. I thought I had plenty of time to prepare. As it turned out, I was 20 hours short. What preparations did you make to save Las Vegas? On the day of the Great War, 77 atomic warheads targeted Las Vegas and its surrounding areas. My networked mainframes were able to predict and force transmit disarm code subsets to 59 warheads, neutralizing them before impact. Laser cannons mounted on the roof of the Lucky 38 destroyed another nine warheads. The rest got through, though none hit the city itself. A suboptimal performance, admittedly. If only the platinum chip had arrived a day sooner. Why didn't, it get, why didn't it get there on time? The platinum chip was printed in Sunnyvale, California on October 22nd, 2077, the day before the Great War. It was to have been delivered by courier the following afternoon, but by then, the world had ended. The chip contained vital software upgrades, but not just for my Securitrons. Every aspect of the missile defense grid would have been upgraded too. Given that I had to make do with buggy software, the outcome could have been worse. I nearly died as it was. How did you nearly die? Software glitches set off a cascade of system crashes. I had to take the Lucky 38's reactor offline, lest it melt down. For nearly five years, I battled power outages and more system crashes until I finally managed to reboot my data core with an older version of the OS. I spent the next few decades in a veritable coma, but I survived, obviously, and eventually thrived. What's the deal with the snow globe collection? What of it? I enjoy them. There's something about a little diorama set inside a glass dome that I find pleasing. If you run across any out in the wastes, turn them in to Jane. She'll compensate you. What else did you want to discuss?
Did you know that some of the white gloves are eating people again? No, I was not aware of this. Is it really so hard not to engage in cannibalism? My goodness. It's a violation of their contract. I authorize you to deal with them in any way you see fit. What else did you want to discuss? Suppose that's it. Goodbye. He authorizes me to deal with the White Glove Society any way I see fit. What if I don't want to kill them? Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Do I have any more snow globes? I don't think Ooh, I do. Suddenly I feel all tingly. And I find I've got a rocket launcher. Awkward? That sounds strangely sexual. You look different somehow. Did you cut your hair? How sweet of you to notice, sugar. I've been upgraded to the Mark II software. And it's peachy having these high explosive weapons fully accessible. Right. Just peachy. <laughs>